we got a brand new video as the thumbnail has probably already told you we're going to be making a silicone mold today before we get into it just like to say i do have a nice new mat brand spanking new let's hope i don't wreck it straight away anyway let's get into it i'm going to be making a silicone mold of these three little items here so these are just cut out of clear acrylic so i've got a pumpkin and two ghosts so if I just show you these up close, if it'll focus on it. It's all it is, it's just a shape cut out of clear acrylic, and then I've engraved with really low power and high speed, just some details on there. It's not picking that up, there we go. So yeah, with silicone, when you're making a silicone mold, it basically just mimics exactly what the material you're, you're molding does. So if it's you know clear acrylic and it's nice and shiny, it'll just have a shiny mold. If you've got engraving on it, it'll be shiny. And then with the engraving, it'll be like a matte finish on there like that. Right, so what you're gonna need to make your silicone mold is obviously the item you're gonna be molding. Here, we're gonna be using these three acrylic cutout pieces. And you're gonna need some sort of surround or a wall or some sort of dish with a flat bottom um, to be able to hold the silicone in whilst it cures. So for me, I 3D printed this surround. So in Inkscape, where I designed these items, I just combined them all. If you don't know how to use Inkscape, have a look on my channel. I've got loads of videos on how to use Inkscape. So I just combined these three figures and I popped an outset on it, created a wall, and then I sent this into, I used Cinema 4D to create my 3D models. Just created a surround, 3D printed it. It's the exact shape of these. And uh, yeah, I'll glue all that down and that will hold the silicone whilst it cures. Be using the hot glue gun to go around the surround so hopefully we don't get any leaks. Right, so to get these items we're gonna be molding to stay in the same place whilst the silicone is being poured in it, you know, they'll float otherwise. You're gonna to need to, you can either use like double-sided tape, you can glue them down. Um, completely up to you, you just need something to make them stick down. So I'm gonna take my gloves off for this because using double-sided sticky tape with gloves on, it's a, it's a challenge. But yeah, I'm gonna be using some double-sided sticky tape. We'll roughly get the right shape of that. Stick it down. Like I said, you could just use dabs of super glue if you want. And get them to stay down there. You're gonna to wanna to try and get them stuck down as possible because you don't want any silicone seeping underneath. I mean, it won't be a problem. You can just cut, it'll just create some flashing and you can just cut that away but it is just a lot easier, you know, if if you can eliminate it beforehand. Right, I'm gonna just get the back end off this double-sided tape. Pop the surround roughly in place there, and I will put these in place. So when you're putting these in place as well, so the part, so I've got the engraving on the top, you want to make sure that's still facing up. Otherwise, when you cast it, obviously it's not going to work. It's not going to mimic it on the on the mold. Now, I should be wearing gloves doing this because you will get fingerprints on it, and the silicone mold it it will show a fingerprint. But just for the video's sake, I'm just going to stick them in like that. Now I'm just gonna use my hot glue gun to go around the edge. Right, you haven't gotta to be too neat about this because all this is doing is just basically making it watertight. You could just use the double-sided sticky tape all around, even on the surround as well. But I always found the silicone, it'll always try and find a way, it's like an octopus. It'll always try and find a way out, and it usually does find it. Right, there we go. So you can see these are stuck down with the double-sided sticky tape, and now the outer shell is hot glued on. And you see from the bottom there, it's all looking good. We'll just push these down just to make sure they are fully stuck down. Right, okay, here comes the fun bit of mixing the silicone. I say fun, it's not that fun. <laughs> I've just got here a mini scales. As you can see, it's very well used. A cup to mix. 
and obviously your silicone rubber. It's a different clear silicone. You can get a few different types. And as far as I'm aware, they're all fine to use uh, with acrylic, with cut acrylic. I know addition silicone doesn't like to cure if you're doing 3D printed bits. But let's weigh this out so it tells you exactly how to use it. So this is the base, this is the catalyst, and it's basically one to one. And you can spend time calculating how much silicone you're going to need, but I just do it by eye. So I'm probably going to need... What's that, about 28... I think we're working in grams, 28 grams of part A, 28 grams of part B, Ooh. if you're a little bit over or a little bit under, I've never noticed any problems, so I'm happy with that. A lollipop stick, and now you're going to want to mix it well. So this silicone, it does cure clear, but what I like to do, I do like to add a bit of color into it. Not only can I tell how well it's mixed when adding that color to it, but it just adds, you know, just a little bit more to the silicone. I notice I am introducing bubbles in there. We will remove them in a moment. I do have a vacuum pump I will be using. But yeah, because it's clear, like other silicones, you'll have like the, the catalyst will be a different color. So when you're mixing it, you can see it's actually mixed in. But with this, you'll see they're both clear, so you're not really gonna note this. But what I like to do, I do like to add a bit of color to my silicone, and I just use acrylic paint. I've never had any problems with the curing or anything like that. So I'm just gonna put a small dab in there, and we're just gonna mix that in. Just scrape the sides. I'm just making sure I'm getting every bit mixed now. So we want to make sure it's evenly mixed and it all cures fine. So you, you can actually pour this, mind, without running it through a vacuum. You just got to pour it slow. And if you notice any bubbles come in, you can just get like a lighter or an air gun on it and it'll just pop them. You can even blow on it and it'll pop them. Just take your time with it. Well, I'm just going to use a vacuum pump. Again, you can see this is very well used. The silicone and resin, everything in there. So pop them in. Get the lid on, and we'll turn him on, and we'll pull a vacuum on this. If you ever see your silicones rising too much, and it's going to overspill, just um, introduce a bit more air in, just open up the valve, and uh, yeah, it'll just break back down. So there we go. I don't know well you can see that on the camera. It's all just bubbling now. It's just pulling any air out now. Any bubbles are popping. So we'll give it we'll give it a minute or two to run that through. Okay. Slowly release the vacuum. And as you can see, it is now bubble free. So I'm just going to take my time and pour this in. And you do want to try and pour at the lowest point. And just let it overflow over the top of the items. One bit of advice I will give you uh, for my years of making silicone molds is with the pumpkin adds really small cutouts for the eyes and nose. Sometimes silicone, it won't seep in there. So just get yourself like a little poking brush like this and get in there and I'll just move it around. I know roughly where the eyes are. I'll just make sure that any like pockets of air are gonna pop and it's gonna allow the silicone to go into those little gaps. And his mouth is there. That'll do it. Not always necessary, but I found it does help because I've done a lot of really intricate molds in the past. And uh, yeah. <laughs> You can waste a lot of silicone by not doing that. Okay, we'll allow this to cure. I'll come back tomorrow and then we'll demold it and see how it's turned out. We'll take the gloves off. They can go in the bin. 
and uh, we'll be back when that's done. Okay, guys, we are back. It's been about 48 hours. Uh, I didn't have time to uh, check on it yesterday to see if it was done, but we're back again today. It is all cured. What I like to do, the cup I've mixed the silicone in, I do like to keep it to one side because you can actually check then to see if it is actually fully cured. Uh, instead of this, if it wasn't fully cured and I touched it, you can make some fingerprints in it and it just makes it look a little bit ugly. But yeah, I can see that is completely cured. I could get that out of there and obviously reuse the cup. Let's demold it and we'll see how it looks. Um, don't know if you can see, you can actually see the uh, pumpkin and the two ghosts in there. So we can just peel this off. You may have noticed as well, I didn't use any sort of silicone release spray, which a lot of people do use. You don't need it, honestly. Silicone only really sticks to itself. It doesn't stick to anything else. Uh, so we can just demold this. Out the mold, absolutely fine. And there we go, the little guys will come out. So there's one ghost, there's the second ghost, and then there's the pumpkin. And there we go, there's still a little bit of double-sided sticky tape. But like I said, silicone only really bonds to itself and nothing else. So that is fine. So there we go, absolutely perfect results. So as I said uh, in the first part of the video, the silicone will mimic whatever is on the item you are casting. With the just clear acrylic itself, you can see the finger on the light. The silicone mold there is shiny. See that shiny? But then you see like the eyes and the mouth, they're not. They've got like a matte finish to them because that is what we've engraved on there. Whatever you're casting with your silicone, it will mimic it exactly. But I may do a, a video in the future of casting some resin in these. I do have resin, castable resin. I'm just not very good at it. Uh, it's definitely one of those things you need to have locked down to be able to do it well. But yeah, I might make a video on it if you are interested. Yeah, definitely subscribe. And uh, I'll uh, if enough people are interested, I will make one. But yeah, there we go, guys. That is my video on how to make your own silicone molds. Earlier on the video, I did use the vacuum pump to degas the silicone. So you don't always need to do that. If you're just careful with it, bubbles are always going to try and rise to the top of the silicone anyway. You can always help it. You can always give it a tap underneath and it'll help those bubbles release. I think you just pop them. Like I said, you can't just give it a blow on it. Use, um, use a lighter uh, or heat gun or anything like that and it can help. You don't need to invest in one, but it does make life a little bit easier. Here we go, guys. That's the video, short and sweet. The longest part of it is just waiting for the silicone to cure. Everything else just takes, you know, a couple of minutes just to prepare, mix, and pour. That is it, it is just waiting. So yeah, I do hope you enjoyed it, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Shout out.